Guys, this is a this is an extra special episode. It's the very first photography website consultation, and we've got my good friend here, Paul Bobolos. Welcome. Yeah, hey, Daniel. How's it going, mate? So, um, guys, this is this is like a new thing that I'm going to be doing, and I'm basically just going to have a look at some your photography websites, and then give you a bit of a critique, some feedback on it. Paul has been a wedding photographer for 25 years, is that right? 25? Um, 25, 26, I've lost count, but you're pretty close. <laughs> Alright, cool. So, and basically, what I'm going to do is, is go through Paul's website and look at some things that we can improve on. So, I was just going to say, Paul, do you want to just tell everyone just a little bit about yourself and just, I guess, when you started, you started using film? shooting with film and all that kind of jazz? Do you remember when you started? Yeah, look, I, I started photography back in 1984, and uh, back in those days, it was uh, film, there was no digital back then, yep. so you you had to know what you were doing. Uh, um, I had a natural knack for taking photos of people, so I became a wedding photographer, um, and that was really challenging. Uh, and over the period of years, it just grew and grew and grew and grew. Uh, but now I'm, I'd like to sort of like uh, change direction and I want to get into more commercial um, okay. advertising and corporate work. Cool. So henceforth, uh, I need to uh, uh, present that into the marketplace. Yep. And um, this is the reason why we're doing this so that we can see how we can best do it. Because ultimately, I am a photographer uh, and it's because we have the tools these days to do everything ourselves. I don't think that that's actually right. We, people should stick to this specialty. Yep. Photographers should do photography, videographers do videography. And I think in that area, we get all mixed up and we become jack of all trades and masters of nuts. And what sort of, what sort of cameras did you, do you, see, you, would, you, I know you said to me a few times, you used to have a few Hasselblads and are they they're the medium format cameras, are they? Yeah, I started off with the Pentax K1000, which was a 35 millimeter and I learned in full manual mode, um, shutter speeds, apertures, depth of field, uh, adjusting the ASA rating. Uh, I never used the program, I wanted to learn photography. I didn't want the camera to do the thing thinking for me. I yep. wanted to think um, and just use the camera as a tool so that um, it can do what I wanted to do. I wanted to represent what I saw through the lens rather than it telling me. Uh, then I moved into a Bronica ETRS 645 format, which was a smaller medium format camera. Um, bought a stack of lenses, and then I went to Hong Kong and I bought myself a Hasselblad. And uh, square format, 6x6 six six centimeters. And we used to use um, 120 film, which people probably these days got no idea what that means. I got, I've got no idea what that means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, basically, it was just, uh, it's not a 35 millimeter canister, it was actually a 120 film. And um, and each each negative was six by six centimeters, shooting square. And going to 35 mil was a little bit of a, uh, you yeah, know, it, it was a bit difficult, but um, thank God I can still use my lenses because the other day I got an adapter and I stuck it in front of my Canon. Do you, are you using a Hasselblad on a Canon? Is that correct? Yeah, <laughs> that's cool a lot, huh? That's awesome. <laughs> Sorry, Carl Zeiss, to be specific. Oh, using a Zeiss lens? No, all the, the Hasselblad lenses were all Carl Zeiss. Oh, okay. So I'm using a fixed lenses, Carl Zeiss fixed lenses with an adapter on a Canon digital body. Uh, it's manual focus, which is, okay, well, we used to be fair manual focus yeah. years ago. Yeah. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, you feel like you've got a real lens in your hand. Yeah, so, exactly, man. And that's, I think, that's definitely why I, that's one of the, I think, the downsides to, to digital photography is people do get a little bit more flag, flagrant when they're, they're photographing. It's just like, don't like it, delete it, take another one. You shoot like two, three thousand photographs at a wedding where I think no. there's something about... There's no thinking here. There's, there's no thinking, exactly. I mean, you really... The art, something the art, with, of, it, the art of photography is slowly deteriorating. Yeah, uh, amongst the masses, because you don't have to really think. It's just like, yeah. And, you know, so what did you do that the other person didn't do? Where's the thinking process? You know, exactly. we used to physically because we're shooting film, 
we have to physically, we have to carry a light meter with us so we can do incident light meeting. Well, what's that these days? You know, what's an incident light meter? Yeah. Hello. Um, exactly. We used to sit, sit there and pick grey spots. You watch, in a few years' time, it will be proven that people are just, they're spending more time on Photoshop than they're doing actually taking photos. Exactly, mate. Exactly. And so I think that's, that's definitely why, like, on my, on the photography walks that I run around Melbourne, I'm definitely trying to teach people how to get it right in camera, shoot in manual mode, do it right once from the start and just use Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever as a very light kind of, don't use a big sledgehammer on your photographs, use some nice little touching here and there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just a quick question just before, just before we get onto the website, i just like to know like when, before you had a website and before digital photography was around, what was the first point of contact when you had a new client come and see you? So normally I'd assume word of mouth was like the big way of um, for yourself to find business. Where was the first point of contact? What happened there and where did you guys usually meet? Well, back in those days before websites, um, most of my work, 95% uh, of it was uh, from word of mouth. Okay, so your future clients had already seen like a full album of one of your previous clients, is that correct? Most of the time, most, yeah. Most likely. And so when when they came into your studio to meet you, did they? what did you show them exactly? What was the, you obviously meet and greeted them, and then what was the first thing that you showed them? Look, the first thing that I showed them was basically, obviously the studio was set up in a way where it created an atmosphere of a, of a, of a wedding photography studio. There were photos yep. on the wall. There was an ambience, an atmosphere that was, you know, conducive to the wedding industry. Yeah. Uh, and that. And then basically just showed them all my work, um, or, or not on my work, or my display folio material. Okay. And that, that'd been proof albums, that would have been uh, copies of main albums that I've done, um, and all the rest of it. So they were able to see, uh, you know, a variety of uh, locations, uh, yep. different couples, uh, different times of the year. Okay. Uh, contemporary photography, um, formal photography, and all that. Cool. Thing. And, and so, depending on what their needs were, well, they would say yes. Well, we like that style. Okay. Would you show them like a full album? I guess. So you'd say, look. Oh yeah, lots of albums. Okay, so you go look. These are like about five different weddings that I've done, and and, and this is what the client received, and this is what I'm showing you right now. It's exactly the same thing. Is that correct? I would but, show them the final product that they would receive if they had booked me and I would actually show them, um, what's the word, um, yeah, like when I was selling packages, I'd say, well, this is what you get. It, well, with me, it was like, what you saw is what you what you got. There was no yeah. hidden things. Okay, so uh, 10 sweet. pages, 20 photos. Back in those days, years back, we didn't have the albums that we have now. It was basically, uh, you know, 20 10 by 10 inch photographs in an album. Yep. And it was leather bound, wood grain. And sweet. Da -da -da -da. So, okay. Cool. All right. No worries. Okay. So I just wanted to just kind of um, hear what you have to say because obviously I, I kind of haven't been around for that that era, I guess. And I myself, I don't. All, all of my um, the weddings that I show my clients, like they either see them on an iPad when I meet them, on my yeah. iPad obviously, or on my website. So basically, what I want to try and do is take those same concepts and then apply it to your website that you have here at the moment. Okay. So. Yeah. I'm just going to go into it now, and I understand obviously that this your website's quite old, and you've been wanting to update it for a while. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's time for a change, and uh, this is a, a great opportunity to uh, to see how you would critique it, so that I can sort of because um, it's you know, I, and it is it's difficult when it's your own work. Yeah. Uh, like I love looking at your photography when I see your images on the on the web. I go, great shots, but <laughs> you know, sometimes when they're your own, it's a bit difficult to, to right. judge. So we do need that. We do need that peer group, the peer review, exactly, uh, to you know um, guide to us. Self improve, yeah. And I'm glad yeah. you. I'm, I'm glad you said that because I think the whole idea behind these discussions is that I want it to be like an open discussion. It's all about just taking on board if you feel that it's appropriate taking on board some advice if you don't feel it's appropriate obviously feel free to dismiss it it's just my opinion yeah, um, yeah. and you know that's the case all the time so uh, listen I'm, I, I'm here because I actually want your opinion this is what it's all about then your opinion and as a photographer I can then sort of depending on where 
how I see things, yeah. I can take something and then sort of like turn around and say, no, 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 that's not my style, but at least I know that where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's just, life is just a one huge educational process. You never stop learning. That's it, mate. I'm totally, totally Period. with you on that. I'm glad you are, glad you feel that way as well. Um, so, guys, just, just quickly, in case uh, you can probably hear the rain kind of belting down, it's quite a stormy night here yeah. in Melbourne, so don't worry about that. We can, I know that you can hear both of our voices and that's the most important thing. So, Paul, I'm going to go to your website. Can you also just bring it up on your screen? Just go to the homepage, paulbobbles.com, and then yep. Yep. click on the homepage. I'm already there, Daniel. You there? All right, sweet. Okay, so the first thing, there's two things about the homepage that I'd say here um, that definitely strike me as kind of needing a bit of change. And I think <clears throat> the photograph that you've got there, and see how you've kind of got that semi-reflection going on in the bottom of the photograph? Yes, yes. To me, that looks very dated, and it almost looks a little bit, um, a little bit kind of tacky I don't want to be too harsh about it but it does look like it's kind of dated and almost like an effect that you'd apply I don't know in Microsoft Paint or something like that um, so I'd, I'd first of all say just get rid of those kind of effects and just kind of keep it a little bit simple because I think it also takes away from the photograph as well that's the first thing yeah cool, I'd like say. That. yeah secondly so you like the photo but you don't like the reflection well I'm finding that the reflection I it distracts me from the photograph. I think it's a nice photo, yeah, it's really it's a nice light and everything. But I'm kind of distracted by the reflection a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, the other thing is your your navigation is very busy and I think we need to add we need to definitely add some structure to this and simplify this um, as much as we can. So I've actually just got some notes here. Let me just have a look. Um, yeah. So simplify. I think always with web design, you really want to make it as easy as possible for the viewer to navigate your website. So in this case, like home, cool. You got weddings, more weddings, and more weddings. I would definitely simplify that, put that down into one section, just call it wedding photography, rather than having like three or four pages. And I think, let me go to the first one, weddings. So it's just one page there, more weddings. That's, so they're individual pages with a whole lot of photographs on them. Um, yeah, my reason, my reasoning behind that was I had, I had stacks and stacks of photos, and I didn't want to. When people were going to go to my website, I didn't want to load them with a thousand images. Yeah, exactly. So I, so I broke them up into into compartments. But I think that there's plenty of photos there to get an idea on a style of photography that I do. Yep. Yep. So, but you're right. It, it would eliminate the menu. And it would be much cleaner if you just had weddings. Yeah, exactly. If, if there's enough there to grab their attention, then yeah, there, then I would actually yeah. get on the phone and make a booking, and off we go. Exactly. So yep. when you go from home to weddings, and maybe all the other sections, it goes from like a predominantly white theme to the, a predominantly black theme. So I keep that consistent. Either keep it all white or all black, just because we don't want it. It almost feels like I'm going to a different website kind of thing. Like you really want to treat your website like it's. A photograph in some ways it's got to be easy to navigate simple and we want to kind of keep the keep the viewer within the website as we do with a photograph we want to keep the viewers eye within the photograph so I and me personally I would go with the white theme because I think this black, black. sorry you wouldn't go for the black no I, I actually think the black photographs on black do look nice but I think the the colour scheme that you've chosen with the, the black and grey, to me that looks kind of dreary, I'd say. Like I actually, I reviewed a portfolio a while ago and I find that that's, it's not like a really nice bright kind of colour scheme and, and that kind of thing. So keep it white, it's also a lot easier on the eyes. And also, if you go to like the wedding section, if you're already on there, the grey border, I'd probably just yep. remove that. Okay. Yeah. But um. If you're gonna change the whole thing to like a white background, then maybe just add a really nice, simple black border around it. But I think just the color gray on black, the color scheme gray on black, I'm not really much of a fan of, personally. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So that's the first thing. And also on the homepage, like you'd wanna almost have a slideshow here rather than just one photograph, put a slideshow. Because I assume that 
when your clients, so when you're saying your clients come into your studio and you show them an album, you're showing them your best work there, straight up. These are, these are my best photographs. You want to yeah. do that exactly the same as your website because your website is the first point of contact for clients these days. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's got to be, you got it's got to be the best of the best. And as soon as they go to your website, you got to show them that. So get your best photographs, put together a slideshow, and put that on the front page. So as soon as they go to paulwellwoss.com, bang, there's photographs, there's a simple navigation. Okay. Are we talking flash here? No, I'll get to this in a minute, but I'm going to say let's steer away from flash um, and I'll talk about that later. So, the other thing is, so getting back to the wedding photography, I, I'd also kind of, the layout of the photographs, it's very, I'm finding it a little bit busy as well. So you'd want to kind of just, this is how I do it, just have like left hand side all the photographs in thumbnails and then on the right hand side the big image comes up. Okay, so we can do that later, I'll show you how to do that. Um, rather than just kind of having, like when I... Small, smaller thumbnails than what they already are. Yeah, well, no, that, that's... See, what's happening is when I click on one of these thumbnails, it takes me to another page, and then you have the big image and then like a film strip across the top, yeah? Yeah, that's correct, yes. So, eliminate that second page. Simplify it. Again, we're trying to simplify it. So... Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. I mean? so you're doubling up. Yeah, you've just got two there. So have basically all you want is so when I click on the first photograph, that page that you're getting to, make that the first page. So make that the first one. You know what I'm saying? So that concept eliminating the first process. Exactly. Yeah, really gotcha. And you'd have them instead of having them on top, you'd have them to the side. I yeah, I mean that's kind of personal choice. Um, and see how that works with the rest of your website. I think I, I think uh, uh, I've got to keep in mind that uh, I was limited. I designed this myself. Yeah. With exactly. with the Mac, which is the uh, the iWeb. iWeb. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, cool. Yeah. In fact, then look, it, it suited my purpose. It was great fun doing it. Spent yeah. a lot of time, but I didn't have any. I didn't get any feedback from someone like yourself to say, "Oh, if, if I'd ran it past you yeah. before I, I published it, uh, perhaps it would have been a bit better." Uh, yeah. I don't think I knew you back then, so I know you now, so <laughs> I'll yeah. make most of you back, Daniel. Excellent. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, so that's that. Simplify the structure a little bit. Now, just, just a word quickly about the actual photographs that you've chosen. So, yeah. the first page, weddings, the photograph on the first row, on the left and right hand side. Weddings, yep. Yeah. So, that photograph, there's two photographs on the left and right hand side there, right? That, to me, the, the, the bride, the, the bride, yep. they're essentially the same photograph. I mean, I would have rather put both of them in, chosen the best one, and just put that one in because there's really not a whole lot of difference there. It's just a slightly different composition. In the left hand one, you just kind of zoomed in a little bit, but I definitely would have picked one of the two because what we're trying to do is rather than having the same kind of cover with a very slightly different pose, just pick the best of the two. If it's something completely different, then put that in, but I find these two are very similar. Yeah, um, no, look, they are, they will take it a very close thing, but I just, like, I couldn't decide which one I like the best. Exactly. Of, so I put them both in. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, and, but I think like a big part of um, of the photography, obviously, is, is that process of eliminating which ones, basically, yeah. which ones you don't want to show the client. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I never, I, um, yeah, no, that's that's good feedback. Yeah, cool. Uh, that's fine. I'm gonna go to just a few more comments about the photographs, Paul. Sorry. So if we go to and more weddings, which is the third one. Yeah. So the third. see this photograph. It's on the left-hand column, the third one down. Yes. Yep. That photograph, and if you go one, two, three, four down again, and a few on that left-hand side. Yes. I'm finding that that color, that kind of filter that you've applied to it, again, to me, that looks a little bit kind of tacky in some ways, like a little bit. This is what I would think. Some people would think that you're just kind of new to Photoshop and you brought that photograph in there and you're just kind of playing around with filters and stuff. Just with, so those kind of styles, there's a few of them on this page um, that are kind of like that, I think. So I probably would either just not do that and put the photograph in as it would look rather than kind of because to me it just looks like it just says photoshopped to 
mean, yeah. I think that's what we're trying to avoid here, definitely. Yeah. And I was going to say as well, there's a few photographs. So that one we're just looking at, the one yep. on the right with the selective colour. The selective colour kind of tie, and it looks like you've photoshopped in a watch or something there. Yeah, yeah. On the top left. This, so again, I think selective colour is also very dated to me. If you have a look at a lot of, I don't know if you, would you have included selective colour photographs like this in your film albums? No. Um, I thought so, because it's just, it's very, it's kind of, it's screaming photoshopped. A lot of these things. Definitely remove anything that you think looks as though it's photoshopped. Okay, okay. Okay, so selective colour. And also, like, the fact that that watch is there, that's kind of telling me, I don't know, maybe that's like a, a commercial for a watch or something, rather than a wedding photograph. Yeah, no, he had a really nice watch, and I just thought I'd put it in. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, okay, cool. So I think um, that's probably enough about just the photograph. Yeah, no, that, yeah, no point taken there. Yeah? Yep, all right, sweet. So, so you've got, now you've got a section here for portraits, fashion, advertising, commercial, children's, infants, and babies. So, yeah. What you've got to do, I think, personally, like we were just saying at the start of this call, you've got to work out what it is exactly, what is your niche, what is it that you want to do. You're yeah. covering like you're covering everything in photography here pretty much with all these categories. Yeah? I mean, like right now you're saying you want to get into more commercial work, then just make commercial work your primary that's, page. Okay? Yes, no, that's not I've, I've definitely decided that the weddings is uh it's very tiring work, it's, it's exhausting, and I, I'm not, after 25 odd years, it's, uh, I've done my first year. what you want to do? Okay, cool. Definitely work out more, so try and narrow this down again. So if you don't want to do weddings, maybe put a link there saying, I have been, because you don't want to kind of hide the fact that you've, you've been a wedding photographer for 25 years, you've been a photographer for 25 years, you want to, you want people to know about that, but at the same time, How would you make that? Would you, would you put photos or would you just like just include it in? What I'd do is I'd make a very highly selected target of wedding photographs. So just have one section called wedding photography. Don't make it the prominent link, but just definitely don't put all those photographs that you have there at the moment. Narrow uh, that. Yeah, yeah narrow, just narrow that right the hell down. Just put a few, just put the best of the best. And if you have to, go and scan in some of the photographs that you've taken from your wedding, from the film albums that you've got. Scan them in nicely and put them up there because if that if that body of work presents the bulk of your work Put that on there like if digital photography was only the past five years yet You've been doing film photography for 15 then 15 years of work is really not being shown to the client here online Really so you're saying to me that the work that I the major body of my work which I did in film back in the 80s and 90s and early 2000 would be okay to put on a on a website. Um, again, it depends. It depends on the photograph, but I think yeah, you've got a point there, definitely. I mean, because no, I, 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 uh, you're right. I mean, you know, Picasso and all the rest of these guys, they've still got the same photos from back then. Now they're not yeah they're not updating their work, and some of the most famous people around were are famous because of who they were back then. Yep. So That's right. I. I, I sort of... Exactly. I mean, yeah, you have, have a look at it because that's, you know, that's a significant amount of your life's work, really, in some ways, and that's not really being displayed to the client until they come in. So they're not seeing... The first point, they're going to go, oh, I'll go, okay, I'll have a look at Paul's website, and he'll go there and go, oh, okay. There's not, you know, like, I mean, you want to see that. You want to see what you've been doing for 20 years kind of thing. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a very interesting... Um... It'll take some time to scan that in, but I have a think about that anyway. I mean, it depends on the photographs and stuff, but I'm sure that you've got some modern film work in there that is, you know, that you'd like to display on there. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, point taken. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that one on board. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay, so let's say now, so you want to focus in on commercial photography. The, the first thing I know, when you go to the commercial page, yeah. why are there Subway logos there? Because I did them. You, do, you 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 photograph that or you design that? No, no. I, I all, when you go to Subway, you go and get your uh, you know your foot long subways. Yeah. All the photographs that you see on all the shops, the letters, the capsicums and the onions, I you photograph. Okay. It's, it's awesome. Fun. But where are where are those photographs? 
Uh, well, if I took the, the actual subway sign out, all you'll see is just letters, capsicums and onions. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, sorry. I've added the subway logo, which I got from the uh, okay. sign writer. I said, I want to okay. publish my work. Cool. I need the subway logo. So he sent me the subway logo and I put it in. Okay, cool. You know what? You know what I might actually do here? I, go. I would maybe actually, instead of having it right in the middle of the photograph, just take one subway logo, put it above the middle one, and then leave the, the other three photographs untouched. So they're just photographs, rather than having a logo right across the middle of it. Because to me, that almost looks like you've designed the subway logo. Oh really? Is that how it that, comes across? That's how I perceive it. When I first saw that, I was like, oh, okay, maybe Paul just loves eating footlongs. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he loves a, a good chicken peri peri footlong. No, I actually but, like the meatball ones. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely I would... Okay. Because to me, the emphasis is on the logo and not on the photograph. So, because what I'd say about this current collection of photographs is... Um, there's not really a lot of it on here. I mean, there's only one, two, three, nine photographs. I'd want to see more. So, and you're going to leave the Project Africa stuff there? Look, the Project Africa is actually part of my life. Yep. Like, but I... Will I'm you be including that on your new website? Yeah, look, I'm, um, maybe, I think it's a good thing. Yep, it's, cool. It's, um, because I must it, say, you... it shows the other side of me that, you know, the, the, the it's, it's not about just receiving, but it's about giving. And I, I, be, I believe that it's more blessed to give than to receive. So yep. I think, I think I would be including that. Is there a place for that, this sort of stuff? Yeah, no, that? definitely. No, I'd, I'd say leave it there. I think we definitely want to see that. Um, definitely, because also it helps people get to know you a little bit, so leave it there. Definitely leave it there. But also, um, when I click on it, I, I actually was reading it before and I'm like, I think I want to know, I want more information about it. I think you need to give more than just the kind of one paragraph you put there, because I don't really know, like, I know what you do because I know you, but people yeah. will come here and read this and go, I don't really know what he's doing over there. I reckon next time you go there, or if you already have more photographs, put some more photographs up there, because you're a photographer. Um, yeah, some photos. yeah, put some more photos up there, give some more info about what exactly it is that you're doing because people will want to know about that, definitely. Um, and I must say, you actually gave me the idea, kind of inspired me to do the same thing on my photography school website, so yeah, that's cool. And actually, I'm just looking at give to Africa dot dot dot, so again here, you've got two sections. You've got Project Africa and Give to Africa, and essentially they're the same thing. Consolidate that make that one section and call it whatever, call it Give to Afri Giving to Africa or Project Africa, but consolidate that down. Bring these photographs from the Give to Africa page onto, onto the one page with the text so that people, all people have to do is just go from the top to the bottom and just scroll down and that's it. Fair point, you're right. This is just, uh, otherwise then the menu becomes short, sweet and to the point. Yeah, exactly. Is that, uh, yeah, good, okay, so I've doubled up quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. Yeah, you really want to simplify and keep the navigation bar, you want to keep that on a single line. Okay, best case scenario is you've just got one line and you've got home, weddings, about, contact, commercial, whatever. But straight up, no, no, not double lines because it looks very busy, just keep it to a single line. So, uh, would you be able to actually do that all on, the, on one line? But yeah, you yeah you, you'd have to work out a way to do it. I mean, here you can't because the structure of your website is like a single narrow column. But yeah. if, you, if you have a look at any of my websites, all of them are on a single line. Yes, yeah, so I've noticed that all across the top. Yeah, all, all the navigation's on a single line. So try and, you've got to try and work out a way to do that. Yeah. Okay, the other thing is, there's no about section here, Paul. There's no, if I want to go, who is this guy? I don't know anything about you. There's no, there's no section, you've got the... I, I'm one of those quite achievers. Now, Paul, what I do is, you need an about section where people know what is it you do, what services do you offer, yeah. How do I get in touch with you? And you need to be very dot by dot specific about it. And also give a bit of your story as well. People like people will like to get to know you a little bit. So in the about section we want about me and then at the end you say, this is what I do, this is how to contact me. Go from there. Okay, that's um, that's interesting. I um, yeah, it becomes more personal then, doesn't it? Yeah, and write it from the first person. That's the other thing I was going to say. Don't write it like somebody's doing a review about you, because that's just cheesy. Write it like, hi, I'm Paul, um, this is what I've been doing. Because it's all, with photography, you try, you're selling yourself as well as your work. So anything that, that, absolutely. You, you've got to write it from the first person so that people know that it's you that's writing it. Like, 
don't create, you know, I've seen some people they'll create like a testimonial section and they'll go, Paul is absolutely amazing and the best person of all. And it's like, no, yeah. don't do that. It's crap. And it's like, hyphen, anonymous. It's like, if you're going to give testimonials, give it, there has to be a credible source as well. So, I mean, I don't have any testimonials on mine really. I've just got a screenshot from Facebook on my photography school, but that's about it. Okay, so I think, is it first about your current website? Do you have any questions before I move on to where we go from here? No, look, it's time for a change, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy we're doing this, um, Daniel. So no worries. Mate. Okay, cool. Okay, first question is, when we create a website, we want to store the website somewhere. We want something to host the website. Who is currently hosting this PaulBoglos.com? Do you know? Uh, um, what company? Uh, Passion Computing, I think. So I'm going to tell you a few things about web hosting companies. The biggest thing is these days, they're all pretty much essentially the same. Price-wise, they're pretty much essentially the same. The yeah. big differentiating factor is customer service, okay? If something goes wrong with your website and it's the only point of contact for your clients, you want to speak to someone on the phone and go, what the hell's happening with my website? It needs to be up stat. I need this thing yeah. up now, okay? So can you get them on the phone whenever you want to? Do they have 24 no. by 7 support? No. It's not, not 24. 24 7, but, uh... Okay. Well, if you're happy, if it's 9 to 5 and you're happy with that, then cool. But I personally, I with my websites, I want mine up all the time because I don't know. Although, if my website's down Australia time, there could be people overseas that are trying to look at it and they can't get access yeah. to it during their business day, okay? So, three things uh, to, look about, to look at when we're talking about hosting companies. One, backups. Do they back up your website? If you, the server... Exactly, you gotta find that out. If they do, great. They should be doing at least monthly backups, okay? Ask them that. Secondly, customer service, is it good? Yes or no? Um, it's good. And the price, how much are you paying per month? Oh, uh, I think it's about $10 a month. Okay, that, sound, that sounds about right, that sounds about average. My personal recommendation was, if you're happy with them, stay with them, but, yeah. My personal recommendation would be to go with a hosting company called HostGator. Okay. HostGator. G A Host H O S T G A T O R. So what I'll do is I'll put a link um, down the bottom of this on the website so you can you, everybody can find this. I guess everybody who's watching. Um, yeah. HostGator. Okay. There's pretty much when it comes to web hosting worldwide, there's pretty much two companies as far as I can tell that are like. What, who you go to, like the go-to people for web hosting. HostGator and another one called Bluehost. I recently did some research and I found that HostGator is better because of their customer service. <clears throat> Where are they based? They're based in the United States, but they have 24 by seven support and 99.9% .9 guaranteed uptime. So that's like, um, that's actually another thing you can check. Because the thing is, computers die, hard disks crash, you don't want to lose this information. Imagine you've been yeah. building a blog for your 15 years of photography and then the card drive dies and you don't have any backups. They don't have any backups. You may as well give up. You know what I mean? So it's important you know, to have backups. Yep. Um, okay, so, so that's the first thing. The next thing is the actual website, okay? What I'm going to suggest to you is this. I know we talked about Blue Domain, and Blue Domain are good if you want a Flash website, okay? The problem with Flash is that they're not compatible. Flash is not compatible on Apple mobile devices, iPad, iPhone, okay? And really? Well, yeah. You won't be able to see any Flash website on those devices. So this is why most people are steering away from it, and this is why I'm going to be steering away from it. What I suggest you do is, <clears throat> you use something called WordPress, which is actually a blogging platform, but yeah, now, uh, now it's actually you can build like entire websites on it just by simply installing WordPress and then applying a template, what's known as a template. It will change the look of your blog into a photography gallery that'll look exactly like a Flash web-based website, but it will work on every single device known to mankind. Okay, so write down WordPress. Yeah, no, bro, I'm, Go I'm writing, I'm writing, mate. I've got a whole page. So. <laughs> okay, no, no, I'm, I'm taking the most out of you, buddy. Yeah, no, no worries. 
Um, so there's that. And then when it comes to templates, there's a company called Photocrati. F F <laughs> P H O T O. Say that again. That's happened in the beginning. I'll put a link down at the bottom, but it's P H O T O. Yep. C R A T I. Photocrati. Okay. That will cost you about eighty bucks, I think, for a template for a photographer. These guys specialize in website in photography website templates for WordPress. Okay. And the best thing about this is, Paul, today. When basically, if you're running a business, it's all about having your website found through search engines. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So you need to be, you need to know about what's what's called SEO, search engine optimization, and this photocratic template and WordPress, they are built for SEO. They are built to be able to be found in Google. Okay. So not only will you get a uh, like a, a gallery um, so you can you know just like a portfolio website where you can display yeah. your photographs you'll also get a blog and a blog is very important for SEO a blog is like you know what a blog is right yeah you know, you know. yeah so I mean you'd want to ask uh, like Photocritic TV every time I create a new episode I create a new blog entry okay and that's adding to my SEO for Photocritic TV. You want the same thing with your photography work. If you go out and do a job photographing a building, put a few of those photographs on your website and just say, hey, check it out. Um, I did this, this job today in wherever, in Melbourne. Yeah. Here are some of the photographs. And the thing is, not only is this keeping a record of your own work, but it's also creating more visibility in Google or what I call Google Juice. So you, you, you're getting yourself some more Google Juice, creating more visibility. And you want to update this blog as often as you can. So, but it's all about consistently updating it. Okay. Yeah. okay so, uh, so tell me something. Your photo critic uh, TV. Yep. Uh, you, you use WordPress for that. That's WordPress, mate. Yep. That is WordPress, but that's not using the pho that's not using the photo credit thing. That's because the, that photo credit thing is not really applicable to this style of website. Um, Photocratty is more for building a portfolio using WordPress. So Photo I go to WordPress, set up the set up the website, and then take okay. a Photocratty template and mm. attach it to the WordPress. Let me just explain something to you quickly, okay? So there's two there's two versions of WordPress. The one that you don't want is a WordPress.com because that's a free one, and that will mean it goes WordPress.com forward slash Paul Bovelos. We don't want that. We want no. paulbovelos.com and WordPress to be on there. So most of the time, when you speak to Passion Computing, say to them, um, look, I want to wipe my whole website and I want to do a WordPress install. They may even be able to install WordPress on there for you or they'll give you a way to do it. So whatever way it is, they'll give you, they'll install it. You just go to your website, paulbovelos.com. It'll be brand new. You go log in. Paul, password, whatever, and then you'll be in WordPress. And okay. from there, you gotta learn how to use WordPress. And that's something that um, you'll learn over time. It's not impossible, but it does take a little bit of getting used to. And within that WordPress administration section, you can apply you can download the photo credit theme and you can apply it and you know. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. We'll do we'll do how to use WordPress on another episode. Yeah. We, yeah, good point. We'll do that. And I think what we'll do is, Paul, when, when you get this website up, we'll do can another... I, can I have that in writing, mate? <laughs> mate, you've got it on... You've got it recorded here. Ooh, public now, isn't it? That's right, mate. No, but um, you know what we'll do? When you get this new website going... Yeah. ...and you're happy with it, we'll go through the new one as well, okay? And we'll just... Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. You want to do that? Yeah. So, <clears throat> Paul, that's yeah. about it for me, mate. Is there anything else? Are there any questions or is there anything else that you want to know? Is there, is there anything else that you're struggling uh, there's, with? Or? Look, there's, there's enough. There's enough information here for me to uh, to digest. Look, I appreciate the feedback, uh, Daniel. This is great what you're doing because um, no. yeah, unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there like myself that um, yeah, we just this is something in so many hours in a day, and yeah. to get sort of this sort of feedback and critique is is wonderful. Awesome. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I think that this could be yeah it's, it's awesome thanks a lot i really appreciate it no worries mate no worries thank you everybody for listening tune in next time that's it from me i'll catch you later